Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we are going to see how we can use thin features in SolidWorks for part modeling. Thin features in SolidWorks, they do not require close sketch. For making thin features, the sketch can be open or closed and it requires only one thing which is specifying the wall thickness and it could be around the mid plane or it could be around the outside of the sketch or inside of the sketch. So here is a basic example. You can see the open sketch that we have drawn in SOLIDWORKS and we can simply extrude this open sketch using the thin feature and specifying the wall thickness and the final product could be like this. And we can also revolve this as a thin section. Similarly, if we close this sketch and we extrude this close sketch as a thin section, it will be the closed part like this. And similarly, uh, this is the thin, thin revolve feature that we uh, made using this close sketch. You see that this particular section, which is this thin revolve from close sketch, it's quite a complex part. And if we try to make this using simple extrude features or evolve features, it could be quite complex. But here with this, it's just a matter of a single sketch. Let's shift to SolidWorks and see how we can create these sketches. And then we will shift to create this exercise on the SolidWorks using the thin features command that we learn and using and creating the planes at inclined angles as well. Here we have SOLIDWORKS and in order to use the thin feature, I'm going to make the sketch first using the simple line without any dimensions just to make the shape. So this is the simple line that we are going to create. Let's see like this. And here we have the finished sketch for the thin features. Uh, so I'm going to draw a center line so that I can use this sketch both for the revolve feature and for the extrude one. So in order to extrude this sketch, we can simply go to this feature. Uh, there is no additional button for extruding the features as a thin feature. It's the same as the extrude boss. And when we click on this extruded boss button, you will see that this thin feature uh, button under this box, boss extrude tree, it's open. And we can specify the direction of the uh, we can specify the direction of the thin feature as a mid plane, bidirectional, or simply one directional. And also we can set the thickness of the uh, thin feature here. And finally, we can select the length of the extrude, which could be like maybe 15 or 20 millimeters. So when when I press OK. Here we have this wall made with thin features. It's that simple. Similarly, I'm going to delete this one. And using the same sketch, I'm going to use this revolve section. Uh, so it gives me this error message that there is no close section. And it asks me whether we want to close the sketch or not. No, we do not want the sketch to be closed. So when we move here, you can see that it automatically detected this as a thin feature. We can set the wall thickness to one or two millimeter, and we can specify this angle of rotation. So I'm going to use it at 180 as of now, so that we can see the same part as we have seen in the presentation. Okay, let's shift to the other portion which was related to the close sketch. I'm going to edit this sketch and I'm going to close this sketch from here so that we have this line. And I can trim these lines as of now. I'm going to this extrude button. So it's like the simple extrude that we have used. And in this particular setting, we need to select the thin feature. We need to select whether we want to extrude the lines as a thin feature or a solid feature. So this is it. Simply pressing the OK button. This will result in this particular shape that we have created. And finally, the last feature, which was the revolve section. 
so we can select this revolve boss here select the uh, plane so here we have this sketch and it is taking this sketch as a solid sketch so since this is the close one we need to specify whether we want to uh, use this as a thin feature or not so by using this as a thin feature and let's shift this 280 degrees you will see the complex shape that we have seen in the presentation like this so i'm going to close this one let's shift to the exercise here is the exercise that we are going to model in this tutorial and you can see one special thing about this drawing is that there is this base plate and this feature is drawn at some angle uh, like which is 75 degrees uh, from the base plate so here is the plan that i'm going to use to model this one first of all i'm going to create this plane p1 on this base plate and then create an other plane which will be perpendicular to this first plane and then I'm going to draw this particular feature as a thin line, as a thin feature on plane 2 and will extrude this so that it touches uh, this base plane after extrude. Let's shift to the SOLIDWORKS. We are back to SOLIDWORKS and the plane I'm going to use to start the modeling is the top plane. You can see that and the first sketch is this rectangle which is base and we can dimension it to 200 by 90 millimeters. We have the basic sketch for the base plate and let's check the extrude dimensions which are 15 millimeters. I'm going to extrude this base plate by 15 millimeters. So we have this base plate for further design of the part. The next thing that I'm going to do is draw the reference line from where I need to pass the plane and this reference line is set at 25 millimeter from the side and 35 millimeter from the other side. So let's get this line on this particular face. So we have these two lines and I'm going to create a new plane which is oriented 75 degrees from this particular face. To create a plane we can go to this features and under references we can select the plane. So plane can be drawn uh, with three different points or two different line lines or a one line and one plane. So in this particular setting, I'm going to select this line so that the plane is passing through this line. And the second feature is this face of the base plate. And this plane is oriented at 75 degrees from this uh, base plane. And the direction is, uh, I'm going to flip this offset so that we have this proper direction where we can create this plane. So this is the plane one that I showed you in the presentation. And the next thing is to create another plane, which is plane 2. Before creating plane 2, I'm going to create a line on this one. So a simple line can work here like this. And I can dimension this line to be at 100 millimeters from the bottom. So, so the references are all set and now I can create another plane. The plane will pass through this point and it will be perpendicular to this face. Now the next step is to draw the sketch for the thin feature and which can be drawn at this plane 2 which is oriented. And it's quite simple. This is the sketch that I'm going to draw and this total width of this section is 130 millimeters and the radius of this 
circle it's 25 millimeters so that's all that we need after drawing this sketch i'm going to dimension this the distance between these two points this is 130 millimeters the radius of the sketch it's 25 millimeters and I'm going to add constraints so that this line and the line on the other side of the circle they are equal in length and one last thing is to make this circle center of the circle to be at the same line as the center so we have this fully defined sketch at the plane now I can extrude this as a thin feature I'm going to check the thickness of this thin feature which is about 15 millimeters so the thickness is 15 millimeters and the thin feature is extruded on the outside of this sketch and finally we can select this extrude up to next and I'm going to reverse this its direction and we have this basic model that we wanted to create and the next step is to create this another extrude at 75 millimeter from the top here you can see that a 70 millimeter from the top you can see that this hole is about 70 millimeters so what we can do we can create another plane which is parallel to this plane too and we can offset this to 70 millimeters in opposite direction and then selecting this plane going to sketch we can use this convert entities command to have this circular region and after that this can be closed and extruded up to the next surface up to this base surface and that's it so we have all the major components here the the only thing left is the holes and the fillers so the dimensions of the hole we can see they are at 15 millimeter from the top side and there is this distance of uh, 100 millimeter between these two holes so selecting the face on which we need to create the extruded curves I'm going to draw this one circle and dimension it to 12 millimeters the second dimension is this it is uh, the center is 15 millimeters from the top face and it is 50 millimeter from the center since the holes are symmetric I'm going to use this as 50 millimeters pressing ok going to this extruded cut we can use this through all we have this one hole and we can pattern this hole to other regions as well so we can use this linear pattern command in Excel the first direction in which we want to extrude this hole is this one and it is at 100 millimeters the second direction is the other side and the distance between them is 55 millimeters and we want actually two copies of these so we have all the holes here now the last part is to create the fillet here there are two fillets of 5 millimeter radius and uh, then I think we have six fillets of 10 millimeters we have fillets on these two edges of 5 millimeter and then six fillets of 10 millimeters on the corners one two three four five six and finally the remaining fillets are of 
2 mm. So this is the part that we have created. I'm going to turn off the plain view. Okay, this is the finalized part that we have. Thank you for your time and we will back with the next tutorial soon.